Okay, so the 2022 Springfield show is over. Uh, I'm flying back home tomorrow, and so I had the full day off today. So deciding what do I do today? Beautiful day, Monday. I thought maybe I come right here, Harvard Museum. Here's my buddy, Kev, <laughs> and we're gonna go for a tour inside the museum. So, the museum. So, keep tuned. Unfortunately, uh, Raquel's in Spain, but uh, Kevin's gonna take great care of us. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Okay, Brian, so I brought you down to the basement because there are some things in the basement that we don't have on display upstairs that are still worth checking out. Um, and because a lot of the, our systematic collection, it's so large, that uh, a lot of the stuff that's good enough to be on display, we don't have the room to display all of it. Right. Um, here's one example of, in the what I call the eye candy category of Elba Elbaite tourmaline, where we have not only beautiful specimens of watermelon tourmaline, like this one from the Dunton mine, from the famous um, uh, mining in 1972. That's from Maine. Newry, Maine. Yeah. Which, of course, New England is one of our Look strong that. suits. Man. Um, and that one, of course, is where they thought you couldn't find any more tourmaline, and a lot has been found since then. This is going back a little bit further, though. This is going back to the turn of the last century, and these are Elbaites in the original case from. Uh, the Gillette Quarry in, um, in uh, Haddam, Connecticut. Mm. And uh, these came in this original case with the original uh, foam from, I believe, I believe we got this from Coons. This, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Fantastic. Oh, oh I look love at that. This. That one's supposed to be like display. that. Yes. This is great. So we have some historical and beautiful stuff. One of the things that was unfortunate about the stuff that came out of the Gillette quarries, it was very fractured. There must have been some very explosive events, so it's tough to get a perfectly uh, formed crystal, but they do exist, and we have some nicer ones upstairs, as a matter of fact. Oh, can't wait. All right. What other Elbite? Well, it's not all from New England, although oh, I, I gotta, gotta show you that one, though. Come on. That's another new repiece, another watermelon with the very uh, noteworthy terminations that this quarry is famous for, or at least locally famous for, and it's watermelon oh, again. Look at that color. Um, but then we have Achoo. some more beauties. This one is from Namibia. Now it looks like it's a really deep indicolite there. Yep, that's exactly what it is. Um, this is something we keep the people, the, you know, anyone who comes in tries to break in. We have this nice shoral specimen. To uh, be clubbed to death by a shoral. Exactly. Might from, not be so bad. <laughs> there are worse things. Yeah. Um, this is a historic AF Holden piece from Madagascar. Um, huge. I don't know what color you'd call that, but uh, it's a very old piece. That's great. Um, and we do have some Pala as well, um, bigger ones upstairs. Which mine's this from? The... Oh, I'm actually wrong. Wow, I got tricked on that one. Oh my God, wow, I'm, uh, the cred is gone. <laughs> Completely gone. It's Namibia, actually. I should know. We wouldn't have it together with all this, with the other material. So, yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so those a few examples. Um, more New England, and now that I brought it up, of course, nothing from, from Pala. Down here, at least. <laughs> Down here. We definitely have it upstairs. That is awesome. So, another uh, thing, again, going on the old historic theme, one of our most important early collections was called, is the Hancock Collection. We got it with a donation from Holden, with those he had a collection that he donated, but he also... Um, made it so that we can obtain the Hancock collection, who was a uh, very important collector at the turn of the last century. And okay. he represented, it's like a time capsule of a lot of the beautiful stuff that was coming out, a lot in the Northeast, but worldwide. Um, so you'll see a lot of Franklin represented, like these classic Rhodonites. He had uh, some of the best Franklin material, and a lot of his material is actually on display upstairs. Um, but we can't put it all up there, as I said. Terrific stuff. 
Um, yeah, this is it's... this is interesting because it's uh, it's an old wolfenite piece. Um, is this a whale? That couldn't be. I can't read, but it sure looks like it. Um, <laughs> I don't know how early uh, they started mining there. That's the that's one of the. But when it, when I see interesting things like that, I'm like, he, he provides the time capsule that answers those questions. But, sure. Yeah. Um, of course, he had a Norwich, Massachusetts uh, spodumene. Not as beautiful, but it was the first well-formed crystals ever described. So th these were illustrated um, because of their their near-perfect form. So it's one of the first descriptions of spodumene, crystal-wise, at least macro-crystal-wise, came from this Norwich site. I think I've only seen one other specimen like that ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he had lots of beautiful things, like Irish aquamarine actually no that's again i'm blowing it here it's austria uh but it's still a historic old one it looks a lot like the the, the classic irish ones yeah. God, terrific mm -hmm. so we can see even more beautiful stuff um as we head upstairs and see what's even better from the hancock collection as well as other uh beautiful things right on Kev, that was incredible, but I want to go down here as we proceed down this corridor because I discovered something down here that I really want to share with the people. Dun, dun, dun! Who is that but Mr. Ross Lilly himself? Hey, Ross, how you doing, buddy? Brian, how are you? I am doing fantastic. Great to see you. It's been yeah, a while. It has. Terrific. Good to see you as well, too. So what you doing? It's always good. Uh, well, I'm doing a research project, and I'm here looking at Harvard's absolutely incredible Southern Illinois collection. Um, I was here about 15 years ago, and some things don't improve with age, but this one did. Wow. And uh, it's just, it's one great surprise after another. So. How would you rank their, uh, their fluorite collection among, uh, like, other museums or other uh, existent uh, collections out there? Uh, from what I've seen, it's, it's number one. Seriously? Yeah, there's no peer. Wow, that is high praise indeed. Yeah. Yeah, it's one great surprise. And one of the things that's so wonderful about it is, is a lot of these things have, not only they, who they got it from, in this case it's Gary Hansen. He was a big uh, mineral dealer collector from St. Louis. But it also has the mine on it. And you just, you just never see that. Terrific. So that, getting that kind of documentation is just... It's just wonderful. Not only that, but the, the quality is just fantastic. So they're doing a superb job collecting both the specimens and all the pertinent information about them. Yeah, the provenance is just, it's really, in a lot of these, they're just, it's just unprecedented. Some of them have the mining dates. It's just, it's wonderful wow. stuff. Wow. All right. Well, we're going to continue on our tour. Great to see you, brother. Yep. Same here. <laughs> Hope to see you again all right, soon. Buddy. All right. Take care. Take care. You too. Kev, what a treat it is to see someone like Ross Lilly hanging out and going through your collection. That was incredible. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing over here now? Well, I figured it might be fun to see a few things that we only keep on the safe here, especially uh, things that are light sensitive, like these two uh, kunzite crystals oh, that we have from the Holden collection from the Pala Chief mine. Um, and these were obtained near the turn of the last century, and they are Good pretty spectacular. God. Look at those. They look beautiful in and of themselves, and one of the things I love to do when we look at these is show down that axis. Oh, down that C axis, you got, oh man, that, that purple Incredible. is like, it's like the best, uh, uh, <laughs> it's the best kind of purple. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, you know, what color can I call this purple? It's uh, just... Exactly. And it's the same with this baby. Not all spodumene will do this, but these sure Man. do. And they sure show the intensity of color that these, these have when lit properly. But um, yeah, and they're, they're pretty nice to look at generally, too. I'm almost embarrassed to say you got me uh, speechless. <laughs> <laughs> so we keep that uh, out of the light for, yeah, for obvious reasons. For good reason. And uh, we also keep this um, in the safe. We don't need to, to highlight this, but this is a little book um, that is 
something that we got uh, with the collection from um, Hamlin. Okay. And uh, Hamlin designed all his jewelry, including the famous Hamlin necklace um, that we intend to see in a little bit. But this is his actual catalog of gems and jewels from 1890. And he sketched all his designs before he actually uh, created them. Described them, sketched them, and as you can see, he was a not bad artist uh, oh with, with his opal work. This is great. You know, I know that you've had this on exhibit in uh, Munich and in uh, Tucson, and it's wonderful to have seen the open book, but to be able to flip through the pages like this yes. is a completely different experience. Yes. And a lot of the jewelry design was to be interchangeable, so you could uh, hook uh, things, choose different hooks of gems to put on different things he designed, and that was true of the Hamlin necklace as well. And you'll see what his last design of the Hamlin necklace is as when we go upstairs. Man, this is, this is a true treasure, wow. <laughs> you know, as impressive as the Hamlin necklace is, I, I just, I love this kind of stuff right now. Oh yeah, I can't get enough of the history of, that this goes along great. with this material. All righty. All right, let's head upstairs to the gallery. I know everyone's dying to see it, but uh, we can compare that with the, with the actual Hamlin necklace. <laughs> Hey, Brian. So we had got a good look at the Hamlin um, sketchbook. Um, right. And so you get an idea of the jewelry that Hamlin designed. His most famous piece is the Hamlin necklace. And today I can show you, have this unlocked, the actual piece. And here it is. So I the, love it. The Hamlin necklace features all... Um, tourmaline, elbaite tourmaline um, specimens from the state of Maine um, with accented with aquamarines around the edge also from the state of Maine. Um, they were all mined in the early 1800s and um, as the story was told to me this uh, piece pretty much through Coons and um, the gem industry of the time pretty much put colored tourmaline on the gem map for the first time. So it's a very significant piece. Are you kidding? Wow, me? I didn't know that. I mean, that uh, that makes us even more significant. Yes. So it's it's historically important. It's beautiful. Granted, you need a very small neck to uh, wear it, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but you see the little notches. He he had designed that because he wanted you to have the ability to to change things up when um, uh, his jewelry was worn. So. I love it. And for the viewers, each one of these little modules uh, are basically what you saw in that sketchbook downstairs. That's correct. So Fantastic. That is such a great piece. I love it when you guys pull that out and take it on the road. Yep. That's fantastic. All right. So show me what else you guys have been doing here since we were here with Raquel. Okay. Uh, during one of the earlier uh, Mineral Talks Live programs. We'll lock this up. Well, uh, I mean, first of all, it's great to see people back in the, uh, the museum. It is very lifting for us very, yeah. uh, for the long time. But we took advantage of COVID by redesigning the cases. They have higher security now, so they all have impact resistant glass and um, both shock sensors and motion sensors added. So what, why is that significant? Well. Um, we were not able to bring out things like the Hamlin necklace or the gold. Uh, our best golds, for instance. Um, some of your best golds. Some of our say. best golds, <laughs> yes. That's right, because we have a very significant gold collection. And so that was one of the big things that we were uh, ho hoping to, to do with this redesign. The other issue is that we had only systematics set up here, and we mm -hmm. still do. Uh, it's just that we had taken, we decided to take this middle area and make it um, into themed cases. So uh, shake things up with that so you can have a whole case on gold, on gems, on the color green. Over here, for instance, this is my uh, pride and joy since <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm uh, partial to the Northeast. We have three cases on the, the best we have in the collection from Connecticut and Massachusetts and Rhode Island here. Um, things like 
a very rare morganite from the Strickland quarry. Um, and the color on the uh, on the camera doesn't come close to showing what no. it's like in real life. It's too dark and too muddy, but it is yes. much, much better in real life. I guess the viewers are just going to have to come and see for it themselves. Uh, that's correct. That's <laughs> correct. But um, yes, and you, of course, New Hampshire and Maine get uh, their own uh, thing because of their famous gem like pegmatite nice. materials like the this... Uh, Slice, bottom slice from the famous uh, Jolly Green Giant in the Smithsonian collection. Well, we have the bottom slice of that watermelon tourmaline. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, some of the best. I always uh, love the rough and cuts here. And things like what I still think is the best purple apatite in the world, the Pulsifer, Pulsifer Quarry mm -hmm. examples yeah. from Auburn. Um, certainly holds up with anything that has ever come up elsewhere but and then there's new jersey and new york and uh um vermont as well that we have to represent and of course if you do new jersey you're gonna have um franklin new jersey franklin, well represented we saw some of those downstairs one of the biggest zincite crystals in the world and uh a not bad willamite gem as well that is something Other things of fun, of course, is when you get an, an acquisition or this nice, you just have to put it in its case all by itself. It totally deserves it. <laughs> Fantastic. But when people come, they will be able to see these things, things like um, the minerals of Sumeb, um, the minerals of climate change, our type minerals and a lot of other interesting themes for uh, birthstones. Everyone wants the birthstones. Everybody so, loves that uh, connection to their own personal so lives. So those themed cases are in the middle here now, and they go with our systematic collection, which is still one of the best in the world. You know, Kevin, what occurs to me is just looking at you right now, that back wall would make an excellent backdrop for anyone's uh, Zoom uh, interface. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely true. I just like to have it behind me. It makes it me feel looks better. <laughs> superb. I mean, this whole place, I'm going to do a, a slow pan around the, uh, the main display area of the museum here. And again, for those of you who want a more kind of in-depth look, check out the Mineral Talks Live, where Raquel kind of walks us through this place in a little bit more detail. I'm just doing this because it's fun, because Kevin is available, <laughs> and because I'm flying out of Boston tomorrow. Yes, but uh, certainly so happy my first that time you were able here. to come here. Oh, what a treat. I mean, truly. Okay, for those of you watching at home, that's going to be it for today. I'm going to go and uh, enjoy the minerals on my own in peace and quiet. So, Kevin, thank you so much, man. Until All right. Next time. Take care.